interesting to talk to him about it just because he's he likes to you know, be responsible for increasing the coffers. We're going to go ahead and get started. It's 9.30. I know a couple people on here, but if everybody could just take a second and in the chat, uh, type in your name, how long you've been in the business, um, and, you know, if you have any insight on what you're hoping to learn today. And so just take a couple seconds and do that. That would be phenomenal. Um, and help me to kind of know who's here. Todd, if you're driving you, I guess you don't have to, so. Oh, so Mary's doing it backwards. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it works either way. I mean, it, uh, you know, they go hand in hand, and so you know, part two is the uh, kind of how to, and part one is the why to. So, yeah. Oh, cool, Andrew. So you guys uh, log in timber structures. So uh, that's very cool. Nice. Beverly, seven years, first class. So cool. So um, yeah, found it. So I like to call these two. I hate calling them classes, but I like calling them workshops because it's all a bit to me. It's uh, you know my favorite saying for years and years has been um, if we learn by doing, what are we doing here? So to me, there's a there's a lot of talk about. Um, a lot of talk about doing things and there's actually doing things. So as I just mentioned to Mary who uh, did Foundations 2, which is coming up Friday, this is the, this is kind of the why part. And then on Foundations 2, the workshop, we're actually going to put plans together. We're going to actually do the, you know, we're going to do the do part. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, and today, and this is kind of critical for today's market. I mean, if you're a newer agent, there's probably not been a better time than right now to get started. Um, the COVID-19 thing kind of reset a lot. There's a lot of agents that have been around for decades that are just gone. Um, whether it's because of age and the fear of contracting COVID and all that good stuff, or just people that just pulled themselves out of the market to see what happened and kind of unknowingly or unwittingly destroyed their own businesses over the course of the last four or five months, but um, you've got a great opportunity. So looking at this, um, this is about long-term building, you know, setting your business up for long-term success. And as a new agent or newer agent, you're kind of, you're kind of got two game plans. And one of those is your short-term, um, the things you need to do right now, just to kind of tread water, things like open houses and, um, you know, picking up buyers when you can, just kind of, you know, I was there too 28 years ago. And for those who don't know me, I've been doing this 28 years and a couple months and uh, spent 25 or 26 years in the REMAX system and came over to Keller Williams in December. Um, and uh, I'm having a blast. So, um, um, so there's a short-term component and then there's the long-term component. So having been there 28 years ago, um, right now it's just about surviving and getting a foothold. But at the same time, you need to be developing your long-term strategy. Um, so the first part, if you guys downloaded the worksheet, um, you know, we've all got those fundamentals. We've all learned about the contracts and the listing agreements and open houses and showing houses. Um, and that's all great. And those are all things that every agent has and works with. Those aren't big differentiators. Those are simply the tools of the trade. So we're going to talk about mastering the foundations of building a long-term business. Um, and that's all about relationships. Um, Todd, I think just mentioned, uh, you know, people are looking for a quick, easy fix. There are no shortcuts. There are no magic bullets um to doing this long term it's a lot of hard work it's a lot of doing things very 
purposefully and by design. Um, and it's a process, it's not a destination. Um, so um, Anthony Robbins talks about a process of, uh, he calls it CANI, C-A-N-I, and it's constant and never ending improvement. And we talk a little bit about that in foundations too when we're setting up our plans for this next year. So we spend a lot of time uh, trying to write deals um, and quote style houses. Um, you know, we just kind of get caught up in the busy work. We were chatting about that before the class started that, you know, even I do it after 28 years, I've just had a really busy June and July. And even myself kind of get off the rails a little bit and caught up in busy work, but I always still have to pull myself back to the fundamentals. Um, uh, and being able to consistently write contracts and list houses is really just um, the result of building and maintaining a thriving business. Um, kind of defining where we're at. Um, um, a lot of agents get caught up, especially new when you're new, that, that we're in the business of selling houses, which is partially true. The bigger, the bigger picture in terms of running and operating a business as a business owner is actually selling yourself and differentiate, differentiating yourself from the rest of the market. So um, we sell ourselves and we sell the service that we deliver, the quality of service uh, or level of service. So the product is you to fill in the blanks. I got to work. I got to look at two different sheets here. Um, everything else is just a tool of the trade. Um, so, you know, you look at um, Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, Walmart, Target, I mean, they all sell hammers. If you want a hammer, you can go to any one of those and buy a hammer. How they differentiate themselves is their, what we call their value proposition, um, what they do uniquely. So if I want a cheap hammer, I might go to Walmart or Target. If I want a professional grade hammer, I may go to Lowe's or um, Home Depot. Um, Lowe's has a unique proposition where if you use their card they'll give you five percent off so i'm a lowe's fan um when it comes to hammers or anything else um uh so along those lines i am famous for reading stories in my classes um so there's a great book called real and uh, if you've been in my classes before you've heard me mention this one by dave crumby c-r-u-m-b-y Phenomenal book, probably the best book I've ever read about the nitty gritty truth of real estate. Every chapter is written by a different person, different perspective. Um, and the most of them all come back to um, relationships. Um, so this one page starts out with a question, how, I, how do I succeed in real estate? Um, and then it moves on to say, in fact, there, are, there is a systematic problem, it's time. There's too much time is spent on thinking and not enough time on acting. So we're talking about doing. Not enough time is spent with clients and too much time is spent with the next big shiny thing. So we're just talking about magic bullets and we're talking about clients and relationships. Uh, personal interaction, face to face, belly to belly, um, is the one thing that no website or online campaign can synthesize or usurp. It's time well spent. And at least for now, you can't be cloned. It's the little things you do every day uh, that can set you apart from your competitors and make a difference in your marketing. And he goes on to give some suggestions on that. But, you know, that's kind of where we're coming at on that. So uh, make sure you didn't miss any fill in the blanks. Um, so when we're talking about the, the different uh, retailers, um, how they do it and their unique uh, value proposition, how they are perceived as the why or how they attract and keep their customers. So, um, and then talking about these relationships, I mean, people tend to do business or want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. That's a, just a big thing. So I spend a lot of time, so I go on a listing appointment. I spend a lot more time looking for common ground with my clients than I do actually talking about their house. 
you know, I'm trying to look for common ground in their hobbies, their family, things that we can talk about where I can connect and create an instant relationship and then kind of build on that. Um, you know, letting them know that, uh, you know, I'm just as real as they are interested in things they're interested in. Um, uh, in, another quote that comes out of that book is people are loyal to great experiences. So when you're working with a client, um, I know we're always looking to do something new. So out of the COVID-19 thing and everybody's panic, um, you know, now when I list a house, we deliver a nice new shoe tray with a sign that's asked uh, people to take off their shoes. We have a basket with extra mask in it. We have a bin in that basket is hand sanitizer. So it's the little things. Um, and it's something that probably cost us 10 or 15 bucks. Um, um, but it's something when somebody's talking to their friend or their neighbor or their relative, they go, wow, and my agent did this. Um, um, so it's something small that goes a long way. Uh, and along those lines, um, you know, Theodore Roosevelt said it best is uh, nobody cares about how much you know until they know how much you care. And I love that quote. Um, Brian Buffini loves that quote. Um, and it's another good book you should get is uh, Work by Referral um, by David or by Brian Buffini. It's a phenomenal book and it's all about relationships and managing those. So um, one of my uh, memories I have of one of my, uh, from my kids growing up is that movie Kung Fu Panda. There's a moment in that movie, um, Poe, the uh, son panda is running around the whole movie trying to find the secret ingredient to his father's soup. Um, the whole movie is about chasing this thing down. And towards the end of the movie, the uh, father hands him a scroll and Poe opens the scroll and uh, uh, kind of like nothing on it. Um, but it's kind of a mirror and it reflects back. Um, so basically Poe sees his reflection and his father ends up telling him that, you know, the secret ingredient is you. Um, and that's true in your business and real estate. That's, uh, um, you know, what you do, the differentiators you create, how you manage your relationships um, with your clients and how you build on that and interact. Um, that's your business. Um, so important things to remember, um, working on these relationships is being relatable, uh, being approachable, be personal, be a resource. And I'm big on the be a resource part. Um, I'm just always trying to give my clients information, whether it's going to improve the quality of their life. Um, if it's going to give them things to do. So like we have a monthly newsletter that goes out. This next one we've got going out are locally owned um, restaurants that do uh, take out or carry out. And they're uh, not chains, they're locally owned. Um, and they're all, there's Italian and Mexican, there's all kinds of different uh, fare there. But um, so it's a, you know, we try to be that resource. We're not always talking about real estate. Um, we're talking about things that add value to clients in their lives. Um, and that's kind of my differentiator. Um, I'm not sitting there constantly, even on Facebook, pounding away at real estate. I just, you know, I'll mention it, you know, every three, four or five posts and a move, you know, uh, but at the same time, trying to be personable and uh, approachable and relatable. Um, so it's when we're talking about the short term and the long term, um, it's, there's a difference in Brian Buffini brings this out a lot. It's the difference between being transactional or transactional agent and a relational agent. And there's kind of two approaches to this business. Transactional means you're just jumping from lead to lead. And it's kind of that treading water that we talked about. Um, and there's agents that survive and have a business and their business model is very transactional where they're buying leads from Zillow um, or some third party source. And you're just constantly working those leads. Um, and they may or may not be de developing relationships from them. Um, it's not a bad way to start. Um, I'm not a big fan of buying leads. Um, 
Um, I'm a bigger fan of developing relationships or doing the relational part. Um, and simple steps to starting um, down that relational path. Um, you know, personal notes are a big thing. Um, Brian Buffini is big on writing personal notes. Um, and just about anything is a good excuse to write a personal note. So, um, somebody contacts you um, about real estate, uh, you can send them a note. Um, you know, I've got a meeting. Somebody called me yesterday. I'm going to meet with them Thursday. Uh, yesterday, wrote them a note right away. I got that out in the mail. So, um, and, and again, that's personal and something different that nobody else does. Um, you know, kind of things you need to ask yourself in terms of differentiating yourself from the market is, um, you know, good questions are who and what and where and when and why and how. Um, and, and answering those in a way that you can try to separate yourself from the market. Um, um, so who may be, you know, who you're specifically targeting, um, which you should be working your, um, your database and your sphere of influence, which I'll touch base on in a minute. Um, you know, what, um, what information, what you're going to do differently, um, what service you're going to provide that nobody else is providing, uh, where, um, and where could be simply like I have a, a geographic farm that I've had for 20 something years. I kind of go at this a little bit synergistically where um, I'm maintaining and working my relationships or my sphere of influence. Um, I also have two or three other things that I'm kind of got on the back burner uh, to generate business as well. Um, so your business is you. And your sphere of business, um, your database is your gold mine. Um, and your business long term is, is, is actually as good as your database. And another way to think about your database that I learned recently is your database, your sphere of influence is actually a list of relationships. And if you kind of keep that mindset, you start reacting with that list, that database differently. Um, when you think about the, you know, everybody on that list is a relationship and what is the quality of that relationship? Um, and then you can take it a step farther. Um, Brian Buffini is big into this. If you get into his system and read his literature and his book, uh, is rating those relationships. So I have a plus relationships, um, and I assign that to certain contexts. Um, um, so people that I do a lot of business with, people who refer me a lot, um, those are my A plus relationships. And my goal is to get everybody there. That's um, uh, a lofty goal and, and that'll never happen, but that's kind of the mindset you have. Um, my A relationships, those are people that, you know, you do business with, or you want to do business again with. Um, they refer you occasionally, but those people that you've had good interactions with. Um, B, um, so everybody is going to be an A plus, A, B, or C. Um, B are people that would refer you if you showed them how or if they had the opportunity. And then C's are people that you kind of want to, those are the relationships I want to build and kind of develop, um, you know, the transaction went well um, or we're pretty good friends and I want to kind of move them up the ladder. And uh, D, if you have any Ds, stands for delete. So um, there, you know, uh, the reality is, and it's true with any business, uh, whether you're selling hammers or cars or houses, is that, you know, there's just somebody or some situation you just don't want to go through again and it's not worth it. Um, and that's actually a luxury once you get to that point in the uh, in your career or business to be able to, to delete people. So, um, but uh, my mom, who's been in real estate since the 1970s, um, always told me uh, real estate's a contact sport um, and contact in terms of referencing your database. And you, you know, the other thing that she added to that was kind of have to circulate to percolate, meaning if your people don't hear from you, 
if you're not maintaining those relationships, you can't expect um, to get anything back. You can't expect to reap any rewards for something you haven't invested in. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, oh, so when we talk about farming, we talk about our spear. This is a lot, um, I like the example of farming and especially when it comes to relationships in your sphere. Um, because one is like we mentioned earlier, it is a lot of hard work. It's a lot of purposeful work. It's a lot of uh, uh, planning and tending. So much like farming, you know, the farmer gets out there in the spring and uh, when the ground thaws, you know, and he's bending over and he's poking holes in the ground and he's planting seeds. Um, and it's much like our business. It's just, you know, you have a new client, um, you have a new closing, you have somebody you met who's interested, um, um, but it may, you know, they may be doing something six or eight months or a year down the line. And throughout the rest of the process, you know, the farmer, just like, you know, just like we should be doing, is maintaining those seeds and those relationships, making sure they're, uh, you know, making sure the ground is weeded, making sure we're um, feeding and watering and fertilizing and taking care of the soil. And that can be by providing information, um, uh, you know, adding to their quality of life, um, like I mentioned, through newsletters and things like that. But just, you know, staying in contact and maintaining those. And um, being very purposeful about asking for referrals. Um, you know, my mindset is I want my business to be 100% referral driven. Last year I hit 94%. So it's a number I track and it's a very lofty goal. The industry average is about 42%. So trying to get to 100% is more of a mindset thing um, and really adjust the way that you're interacting with clients. So even though I have your house listed and I want to sell that house, um, and keep my business going and thriving. Um, I'm actually trying to do such a good job that I'm working on the next house, meaning who you're gonna refer me to. I'm working for your family and your friends as much as I am you. Um, uh, so farming and synergy, we talked a little bit about that. So you have your sphere of influence um, and you're, you're maintaining those relationships and developing those relationships. Uh, farming, I mentioned I do have a geographical farm and kind of have a synergistic approach. It's kind of like don't have all your eggs in one basket. So as much as I focus on past clients and my sphere, I've always got something in the back burner with uh, two geographical farm areas I get. That's funny because during the COVID shutdown, um, a lot of business shut down and actually for about uh, about a 10 week period in my two farm areas really paid off. Um, and I was glad I had those. Um, I just had a big mailing go out before all that happened. So they're sitting there with the information. I do like a neighborhood report on all the sales for the previous year. It's a big four page thing. Um, and that had gone out. So those relationships I, I vest myself in, not as much as I do my, uh, my past clients and my sphere of influence. Uh, follow up and adopting. So follow up is huge. Um, we all generate leads. Um, making sure you follow up and develop those new relationships. You know, and again, you're trying to move these people up the ladder. So if there's somebody that's a, that you categorize as a C, you want to do business with them. You like them. They've got good real estate goals. They want to buy their first house or they want to sell their house and downsize. Um, that's something you want to invest in and you want to move those people from, you know, you want to get everybody off the C list and move them up to B's and then get those B's moved up to A's. Um, um, and then adopting. Um, and it's funny because this came up in, um, on the Facebook page for Keller Williams about a week ago or two weeks ago. Um, Somebody made a comment that uh, they were working with a buyer and the buyer closed, moved in the house, and the listing agent sent the buyer a gift, um, even though it wasn't their, their client. Um, 
And there were kind of a few different takes on it. And I kind of sat back and watched, but it's actually something I was taught to do 25 years ago, 26 years ago, there was a, I forget who it was, but you know, you're new in the business, you have a, uh, or even if you're existing in the business and you do a transaction um, and it's your listing, uh, say, and you just, you know, I've taken those, those buyers and put them on my mailing list um, because I met them. I like them. The transaction went well and maybe their agents newer, maybe their agents, you know, aging out of the business. Um, but I just, I try to adopt them. And uh, I don't necessarily do that so much anymore, but that was a strategy that worked for, for a while. Um, and when I did, it worked out, you know, worked out. So homework um, and self-work. So again, we talked, you know, this is foundations one. We're just talking a lot about the why, why we need to do this, why we need to build a foundation why we need to have a out a long-term outlook and a long-term plan um and on friday we're going to do the do part we're actually going to we're going to sit down and put your plan together for 2021 in you know building on this foundation and and um purposely set up a plan to interact with your clients and and uh, maintain and take care of and tend these relationships um, but self-work, I mean, it all starts with having goals. Goals all starts with having vision. And it's just how, you know, so over the course of the next couple of days, just really need to think about um, how you envision yourself differentiate, differentiating yourself from the rest of the market. What things are unique to you? Um, I know there's an agent at the office that uh, is involved with rescuing dogs and things like that. And that's a neat angle. Um, um, but again, you know, personal, being personal, being a resource, uh, being relatable, what things are you gonna bring to your clients and bring to the table to kind of set you apart from everybody else. Um, one of my favorite stories, and if I would uh, be remiss if I didn't talk about motorcycles, because outside of real estate, that's my next big thing, but there's a, uh, motorcycle gear, I can go to hundreds, if not thousands of websites and I can buy tires and helmets and gloves and jackets and pants and boots and, and all that good stuff. About 2007, 2008, um, three friends in Philadelphia had an idea to do it differently. Um, they lived in an apartment together. They put $30,000 on their credit cards and they built a website called Revzilla. And what they did uniquely that nobody else did, they took every single product, every single helmet, every single pair of gloves, and they learned everything about it, and they produced high quality, two, three minute videos of, I wanna know about a helmet made by a Rye or Shoei um, or HJC. I can go to their website and I can read the reviews and I can watch, um, then tell me about that product for um you know five minutes and show me how it works and and you know and they've got the good return policies and all that but they became very relatable um anthony is one of the owners and i swear he's my friend even though i've never met him but i watched his videos hundreds of times and that was the big differentiator so for these guys sitting in their apartment in philadelphia November 2007, put $30,000 on a credit card. Um, in, in 2012, five years later, sold that company for $20 million, um, selling the same stuff everybody else sells. But the, you know, and it's just funny because uh, those of us in the motorcycle community that are uh, very familiar with Revzilla are kind of waiting to see what the new company does. Like, how do you replace Anthony? Um, um, so that's the kind of thing we're kind of talking about uh, in terms of building relationships. Even though they're in a warehouse in Philadelphia, they're doing these great videos. Um, they're making online purchasing. Um, uh, you know, very personable for, for what, for the venue that it is. 
um, and they're very, very relatable. Um, so questions are like, how can you add value to your client's purchase and sale or your spear's life? What item of value can you consistently deliver? Um, um, you know, we just adopted actually last night a new follow-up system through uh, some software called Folio. So my assistant, my wife can track transactions and you can actually add in your clients. So we're taking that experience um, again, wanting to have clients um, have a great experience so they can actually watch, they can uh, look via link and see what's going on with their transaction um, in terms of when the mortgage commitments do, when we're following up on the title work and survey with the attorney and all that good stuff. So it's something that costs me, I think $12 a month. Um, everybody, my assistant, my wife can kind of track what's going on. The client can log in and track what's going on. They have access to all their attorney contact information, and the bank, everything in one place. So again, just, you know, it's those small differences we talked about. Uh, um, so, you know, try to think and imagine if 100% of your business depended on referrals uh, from your sphere of influence, what would you do differently and how would you act or interact um, with that list of people? Uh, and that's kind of um, kind of the approach I have when I wake up every morning. I'm not, you know, leads that come through email through realtor.com or Zillow and things are nice. I honestly like don't have time for it. I'm just, I'm focused on my relationships and past clients um, and what I'm delivering to them, developing that uh, referral business. So I can, you know, so I, over the course of 28 years, have uh, developed a business that kind of maintains and feeds itself um, as long as I'm maintaining and feeding that, that garden. Um, Questions anybody has? Um, things that uh, um, you might have uh, questions about in terms of um, relating to clients, um, keeping in touch with clients. Uh, hopefully that all makes sense. Um, Another quote in this book, Real by David Crumby. Um, and, and David Crumby at one point notes in this book, um, it says, the very best agents that I know do little, do little or no advertising or lead generation. And he kind of moves down and he goes, how did these agents get away with not spending a lot of money promoting themselves or on lead generation? The answer is surprisingly obvious. They focus on creating real, tangible and legitimate relationships with each and every client and they provide amazing service to every buyer and every seller they make every client a raving fan um, and he goes on he goes you know they have an exceptional devotion to relationship creation and maintenance uh, providing great service and focusing on the relationship more than the sale um, and, you know and there's a lot of uh, a lot of great perspective in that and again, it's, um, um, I got to the point in my career, you know, probably five or six or seven years in where I was doing very well and you're moving through transactions, um, daily and you're kind of in, I still catch myself doing this when you're, you know, you're answering the same question for the 2000th time, 28 years, um, and it's easy to lose sight that, you know, we do this day in and day out and it's very elementary to us at some point. Um, and you kind of treat it like that with clients. Um, and it's just kind of stepping back. So I've got a really, really good client and they're wondering about their closing date and they're like, who tells me about my closing date? Um, and it's just easy to kind of, um, you know, brush that off or, you know, because it's, it's so elementary to us, but just kind of refocusing and picking up the phone and explaining to them exactly how that closing uh, process is set up and works. Um, oh, a couple questions to Taylor. 
Are you very deliberate and direct in asking for referrals? I'm like casually ask, but I don't want to so over ask. So, um, yeah, so there's, you know, I'm a little bit, I'm kind of, uh, I'm purposeful about it and I do it in different ways. Um, so when I refer a new client um, to say the mortgage person, they say, you know, you need to call so-and-so and get a pre-approval. And I say, and let them know you're a client and friend of mine kind of thing. And I always, I always make sure I use that word friend. Things that I send out um, to past clients and, um, and I've included it for years and we'll talk about this in foundations too is um, I include the saying under my name or it's kind of like my tagline refer with confidence. In the newsletter we send out um, every couple months there is a um, right on the back page we put um, how many houses we've sold this year um how many like average days on market i think is one of the stats and the other stat that we include is percentage of referral and past client business so everybody knows that number is important to us um and then again we have the line you know refer with confidence but you know there's always you know you're i know i've done a good job when i'm doing a final walkthrough or, you know, at some point in the transaction, the client says, you know, we'll gladly refer you to anybody you know. Um, until recently, I was kind of sheepish about asking for Zillow reviews. Um, um, you know, you guess you did a good job. You hope you did a good job. You're afraid you didn't screw anything up and you're, a, you know, you hope they don't uh, tell the world about it. But I've become very deliberate after the transaction about going, Hey, could you take a minute? Um, this is, you know, this is um, kind of helps me in the future and write a review. And it's amazing how many times they, uh, they do. I, you know, I'm probably in the 90, 95% tile that they'll, they'll respond to that and actually write a review, you email them the link and you, you know, you ask them on the phone, but yeah, so I um, very deliberate about asking for referrals I kind of do it in a casual roundabout way. Um, um, uh, you know, or if somebody says, hey, you know, are you busy or something like that? Or how's business? I'll say, business is great. I just sold all my listings. Um, geez, if you know anybody, um, you know, so if they bring it up, I'll uh, work that into a conversation casually. So, um, Mary and Snowbot, um, ideas of an appropriate gift. Um, you know, I'm big on giving gifts and, um, uh, luckily my one hobby is photography. I've actually, um, I just sold somebody, somebody moved to Rhode Island. I sold their house out in sodas. They sent me a referral. Um, and I've got a picture of photograph of the Sodas Point lighthouse I took, and I'm actually mailing that to uh, get it framed and mailing it out to them. Um, and this all becomes part of the um, personal part, is that these people are truly relationships. If you're looking at your database, um, not as a bunch of numbers and phone numbers and addresses, but you're looking at your database as a list of relationships and you want to move your C's to B's and your B's to A's and your A's to A pluses. Um, those relationships need to be genuine. Um, so it's getting into Mary's question. Um, so I always try to find um, something that's personal and meaningful to them. So if uh, they were clients of mine and I knew they had a specific interest or hobby, I would first of all try to do something on that. There's times where um, I just did it this morning on Facebook. I know somebody's in the cats and they love their cat and this cat meme or mem or whatever you, whatever the young kids call it now um, came up and it, you know, I copied it and posted it and then somebody else chimed in, hey, that's perfect, that's funny, you know, that's that person kind of thing. So again, it's showing, um, goes back to Theodore Roosevelt's quote, nobody cares how much you know till they know how much you care. 
and finding small ways to demonstrate that words. You see a magazine article, you see it, something on the internet and you share that with them because that's something they're interested in. Um, if you were friends with me on Facebook, you'll see people do that to me. They'll go, hey, here's this funny motorcycle thing or here's this interesting article or something. Um, and to me, um, that kind of shows they're paying attention. So I recently had surgery and I have uh, somebody I coach with uh, once a month that I've never met other than on Zoom. They're down in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and I had a five week recovery from that. And um, uh, most of our time is coaching and it's a group mastermind kind of coach thing. But in the mail shows up a book, uh, you know, it's basically like a history here, a uh, look at motorcycling. And it's a big thick book with a personal note that says, hey, you know, thought while you're having some downtime, you know, and uh, that person um, instantly became my favorite coach kind of thing. So when they demonstrated the ability, they were paying attention um, and they know what I'm interested in. And even though I'm pretty sure she doesn't know much about motorcycles, it just, you know, it, she, you know, she went out of her way to send me something that uh, connected with me. So it makes sense on uh, gifts and, and doing gifts. And then foundations, well, too, we talk about um, working your A and A plus people, kind of being very purposeful uh, about connecting with them with gifts. Brian Buffini does um, uh, what they call pop buys. Um, which is where you take a select group of clients and once a month you drop something off with a, with a note. Um, I, I took that and I adopted it to my own. So uh, we do three or four very deliberate things that we'll talk about on Friday every year that we plan well in advance. But one of those is coming up uh, in about three weeks is my top referrers, my A+. Plus people in my most recent um, best clients, we deliver mums to. Uh, so we went to the greenhouse, ordered 150 of them a few weeks ago. They'll be here. We have little tags. Um, so something about, you know, the fall markets in full bloom and on the back of it's my picture and refer with confidence and kind of thing. So um, again, that's something he, you know, they, we've been doing that for five or six years. So it's very personal. It's kind of sort of real estate related, but not really, um, other than the tag um, kind of thing. Other questions, insights, thoughts? Um, I will make sure all the blanks on your worksheet. Did I miss anything? Anybody's following along? So the, um, and I shared this with the last class, you know, this is a business you put, you know, you put a lot of your time and you sacrifice a lot. Um, and uh, going back to Anthony Robbins, um, it's a process, you know, if you're in this for the long haul, it's a process of never ending, constant and never ending improvement, can I? Um, and, you know, myself and my assistant, um, um, uh, and my wife now who's just joined me cause she lost her job and we just decided it's time for her to step in and take care of some things that she's really good at. Um, um, but we do like five or six things that we focus on and I really don't go, we talked about earlier, read that quote about chase, chasing the shiny objects. We do, you know, three to five things very well. And I remember when my assistant first joined me, I go, here's my listing presentation and we're gonna rewrite the whole thing and we're gonna update the look. And then we're gonna move on and we're gonna do our buyer's presentation. And then we're gonna move on and we're gonna re, you know, redesign our business cards and signs and things like that. And then when we're done, we're gonna go back and do it all over. So right now, even though we redid, we redid the buyer's presentation three years ago, we're redoing it now. 
um, updating a look, updating the information. And then, so it's just that, kind of that process of um, making things better. So I have, uh, when we have a closing, we do the final walkthrough with a buyer. We have a moving day basket we give them. It's a tote. It's one of those 31 totes. And that probably means more to uh, uh, the gals and those guys, but women obviously like these 31 totes. And we fill it full of stuff for moving day, a roll of toilet paper, paper towels, uh, cleaning supplies, measuring tape, you know, things that, you know, stuff to hang pictures on the wall. And uh, we've been doing that for a few years. And just last month, we took the, the whole basket, we dumped it all out, put it all out on the table, and went through item by item going, how can we make this item better? Um, is there anything we should add, anything we should delete, anything we should personalize? Um, and just kind of going through that process of improving. Um, so I'm gonna leave you with this one last thought. Hopefully you guys will join on Friday. I forget what time it is, but it's part two. And part two is the do part. Part two is where we're gonna sit down with a calendar. We're going to go month by month. Um, I'm going to show you exactly what I do um, in terms of being very personal, about Mel, personable and uh, deliberate about maintaining these relationships. And I'm going to give you that whole plan and you're going to formulate your own um, and hopefully launch yourself into a fantastic 2021. So uh, favorite quote at this point is, uh, quote, I didn't come this far just to come this far. I mean, you've got this much time and energy um, into your business. I have this much time and energy. I've got 28 years into my business, and I didn't come this far just to kind of like stop here. Um, granted, I'm kind of at the maintenance phase of my career, but um, I still want to be better. I still want to be on that leading edge. Um, been with Keller Williams for 10 months now. Uh, and, you know, excited about the business again, excited about the technology that, uh, um, and the insight that Keller Williams brings. So I'll leave you with that thought that, uh, uh, I didn't come this far just to come this far. I hope to see you guys on Friday. Um, uh, I hope you enjoyed kind of the insight today. Like I said, we're talking about the why, um, um, and a little bit of the how, and on Friday, we're going to do the do part. So um, thanks for your time. Thanks for joining me. Um, hope the information was helpful. Um, feel free to email me um, with any questions you have, anything you want me to look at. Um, feel free to call. I will type in my cell as if anybody has any other number and my email. Oh, anything you missed, any of the resources, um, anything you wanna share or want me to share, feel free to give me a shout. And uh, again, hope to see you on Friday. We'll do the fun, what I think is the fun part, the actual doing part. Thanks, Harlan. You bet, thanks, Todd, have a good day. And uh, I will see you guys then. Have a great day. Thank you. Bet. Thank you. You're very welcome.